Okay, the underside of our 2002 Porsche 911 Targa six-speed. This car has over 100,000, over 110,000 miles on it actually. Uh, new tires, <laughs> new everything pretty much right at the moment. Um, needs brakes. <clears throat> Couple of scratches and scrapes under the front. No surprise there, I guess. The uh, nose needs to be touched up a little bit. I've got to work on that. Uh, cleaned the radiators not too long ago, so they should be pretty good in there. Uh, it's all plastic down here. These vents are, if you have a center radiator, which this car doesn't, these vents are where the air would come out. Uh, the radiator air, which goes in there, and the air conditioner, that's the uh, radiator you see in the front is air conditioning, uh, actually comes out, see that little triangular shape there, here, let's do this side, there, all right, uh, wait a minute, there, that's where the radiator air comes out, now in later cars, they put some slots behind, or in the front of the uh, wheel well uh, cover uh, and let the radiator air go out there, which I'm going to do one of these days, but haven't done it yet. Um, this is the bottom right here. This is the bottom. Come back out here. That's the bottom of the frunk right there. Um, more scrapes and scratches. What else can you see from here? If you look back there, you'll see the uh, duct right here for it's an air duct and there's a little NACA here which ducts air coming off the front end here towards the brakes it goes around the corner back there and goes into the brakes that's pretty neat there's one of those on each side uh, let's see okay underneath uh, plastic covers uh, this one's broken that piece is missing you can see it's in over there. Um, it's pretty smooth. Should be. There's nothing under the front of these cars except the front suspension. I redid the front suspension. I did all the suspension. All the suspension arms were new a year ago. Um, every rubber thing, everything that had rubber in it, uh, sway bar bushes, the, all the suspension arms, the ones that go forward and backwards, uppers and lowers, sway bar mounts, everything, steering rack stuff. Uh, those are new shocks, coney yellows. Everything, everything is new. I don't want to do the same thing with the brakes one of these days, but haven't done it yet. Uh, a lot of aluminum. Uh, the hub carrier is aluminum. All the suspension arms are aluminum. Uh, brake caliper is a monoblock aluminum. Pretty neat. Uh, pretty nice stuff, actually. Little air deflectors there for the front fender wells. Up there is where they have uh, slots cut. And some people retro cut some slots in there to let the air come out. It's less air coming out under the car, which um, supposedly, you know, helps a little bit with lift uh, at speed. There's the uh, mount, uh, the, the uh, jacking point. There's a drain, I guess. I'm not sure what drain that is. Um, not a lot else to see. Uh, a lot of the finish you see under here, like this discoloration right here, that's a uh, factory came that way, like a Cosmoline or something that they spray on there. I chose not to clean that off. Uh, I washed everything really well, but I, I didn't remove the original uh, finish on things. All right, so I'm changing the oil right now, so I got a bunch of stuff in the way, and I'll uh, pause and uh, move some stuff, and we will uh, pick this up on the other side. Anyway, I moved all that stuff up, so it's under the front of the car now. There's where the air conditioner condensation comes out. Um, but this is about where we left off. Uh, they don't have any sort of side panels. Like, they might do that nowadays, I don't know. I haven't been under a new one. Got hoses, pipes running front to back, of course, because you've got battery and cooling gizmos in the front and then 
all the stuff that does it in the back, fuel line and brake line there, uh, more plastic covers. Uh, you can't really see the transmission. It's, well, I'll point, it, point you back at it, but it's under there. Uh, there's another jacking point. Um, a lot of cars this age, some of these plastic bits are missing back here. Uh, this, mine are pretty broken up, but I patched them together so that they keep working. Some of them are unavailable. Once again, you get the rear suspension. Uh, it's all aluminum, including the uh, help carrier out there. Same uh, aluminum brakes. There's a big subframe here, right there. That's aluminum. Uh, so a lot of aluminum there, you can see it. And again, I didn't clean that original finish off of it. Uh, I left it uh, cosmolined, including the transaxle, which is what you're looking at right there. Here you can see I'm draining the oil out. Oil drains out of these cars for hours. So uh, the thing to do is to uh, pull the plug and get it hot, pull the plug and do other stuff for a while. One guy actually recommends, uh, Jake Craby, he recommends leaving it overnight. I'll probably just do a long series of hours <laughs> and not that overnight. Uh, there's the drivetrain. Uh, there's the axles. I had them redone. So a little bit more about this car. Uh, the motor. Okay, I can see a little bit of it here. It's actually upside down. Let's turn it around. Flat six stage two. And that's what it is. It's a flat six stage two motor. It has a, uh, up here, a little hard to see maybe, but a spin on oil filter adapter. Uh, and there's a little hose coming off the side of it, which comes down here and goes up there. And that feeds the uh, IMS solution, which is a plane bearing, which replaces the IMS bearing in the front. One of the infamous things on these, it goes bad. Uh, you can look up in there and see how nice and clean the motor is. That's because it just came back from Jake and Flat Six Innovations and the folks over at uh, Specialty Cars in Allentown that, uh, that did the uh, removal and installation and uh, preliminary work. So anyway, the engine was taken out. Uh, I figured I'd do it uh, preemptively uh, and put a, uh, got it uh, bored out to four liters. Uh, cylinders were honed out and um, they put uh, Nicosil, um, aluminum, Nicosil coated aluminum uh, sleeves in, uh, bigger pistons, uh, heads were tweaked, lots of other things. So now it's a four liter with much more torque and horsepower. Uh, they don't tell me how many, but it feels like a lot, I'll tell you. Um, let's see, what else to see? Okay, let's turn around a little bit here, not hit the oil. <laughs> there we go. And you can see up in there a little bit, that's the transmission going forward. So it's a transaxle. I'm not crazy about this way this car shifts, but they tell me, the people that know them a lot better than I do tell me this is just fine. So I don't complain. Here's another better look at the rear suspension. Uh, I need to change these sway bars. It's uh, when I put uh, the suspension I put on was the Coney Yellows, which are a sport shock, and uh, they're you know, what they call ROW MO30. ROW is rest of world, uh, which means it's everything besides North America, and MO30 is the de model designation from uh, Porsche. Uh, as to the uh, suspension. So ROWM 30 is a sport suspension that the rest of the world gets and we didn't here in the US. Uh, so those are the springs. And I didn't change the sway bars when I did all that and I need to do that. There you can see the headers. I mean, people make headers for these, but good heavens, what are you going to actually accomplish? I'm not sure. I don't think a lot. Um, this car, let's see if I can get this. Those are uh, FSI um, X pipe. So ordinarily, from this uh, bank, exhaust bank over here, the exhaust comes across and goes into this muffler over here and then out. 
um, and then of course the opposite. But in this case, there they turn around here in the middle. You can see there's a joined section in the center. Um, cat catalytic converters are uh, slightly different from stock, um, and uh, it takes up a lot less space, and it makes a nice sound. So that's that. You can see how clean the motor is. That uh, sump is not stock. That's a, obviously a. It's a half quart deeper. Adds a half quart of capacity. These cars can use extra oil capacity for. Uh, and they're supposedly uh, you know, what do they call it? An integrated dry sump. But they know all that integrated really, and they do have oiling problems at extremes of. Uh, <clears throat> G-forces to the left, or to the right actually, right turns, is where they have a real problem. There's exhaust tips, I want to change those, I'm not crazy about them. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to get the parts to um, move them a little bit, and if you, I don't know if you can see that at these angles, but that muffler clamp up there, I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, that muffler clamp up there is... Well, it's 116, 113,000 miles of rust is what it is. So I got those coming and a couple other parts and then I'll play with exhaust tips. Um, that's about it back here. I mean, there's the back of the car, you know, the bumperettes and whatnot. I like this car, they, a lot of them, they had uh, different color ones. And these are the body color, which I like. Um, what else to see back here? Oh, look at a wheel, I guess. There's a wheel. The uh, drilled brakes, I think that was a thing. I don't know if the Porsche still does that. Nice big caliper. I think the backs are four piston, the fronts might be two, four or six. Big brakes. Uh, not huge, but I'll tell you, this car stops. Um, it stops good. So, that's about it. Um, these, uh, are the, my favorite, uh, five-spoke wheels on these cars. They're very light. I'm pretty sure they're BBS. Um, uh, nice stuff. Um, what else? I think that's it for now. There's the, there's the wear you get. Get this out of it. Easier to see. Uh, for 100,000 miles of crap being thrown up on your when your Porsche, that actually is not that bad when you look at it. Now, even back here, it's not horrible. So, yep, yeah, that's that. So that's our 2002 uh, Targa, 911 Targa, 996, uh, six-speed underneath.